When your best isn't good enough, then what? <laughs> I think we all have these situations. Um, life turns out to be less than what we've expected. Maybe you thought you'd have more money by now, or you thought relationships would have worked out differently by now. In short, you thought you'd be happier by now because you gave something your best, but she still came up short. So now what? When this happens, we're often brought to a point in life where we question, well, how should one live life in order to make the most out of it? And what's the secret to success? In search of finding the answers and the means to an end, the end being happiness, that is, <laughs> Oftentimes we run to religion or we take solace in spirituality. Some of us take comfort in conformity by doing what others say we should and shouldn't do, whether they really have all the answers or not. Why do we follow all these rigid rules? It's because we think it's going to bring us success, but when it doesn't, then what? I'm convinced that we often follow these rigid rules, whether it's from religion or spirituality or, you know, conformity, conventionalism, doing what society says or spiritual gurus say. We do this because we're looking for something solid that we can find security in as false as that security may be. If only someone could tell me the way to happiness, we think we'll finally live the life we always wanted. But then we encounter people who say cliche and contradictory and confusing things like, live in the moment and live your bliss. While others say things like, leave a legacy and live a life of meaning. Who's right? Who's wrong? The answer I found is that they're both right and they're both wrong. <laughs> I know, I just added to more confusion there. Okay, why? Why is it that they're both right and they're both wrong? It's because you can't make the most out of the present without risking the future. And you can't preserve the future without risking making the most of the present. This duality, this damned if you do and damned if you don't reality that we live in is the human condition. And it's quite probable that living a better life requires us accepting this truth. Live long enough and you learn that truth is often situational. Wisdom is knowing how we apply truth to life for optimal results. But that depends on where, how, and when we apply it. What's true in one situation may be false in another. What has meaning in one situation may be meaningless in another. So it's hard to know how to make the most of the future and present at the same time when those are often in conflict with one another. It's hard to know how to make the most of limitations and possibilities at the same time when those are often at odds with each other. For this reason, it takes courage to live an ordinary life, a life where we fail and others fail us because we're human. And we live in a reality of dualities where for every pro there will be a con, for every shimmer of light there will be a shadow, for every benefit there will be a cost, for every adventure there will be a risk. And when you accept this, then it's easier to accept life's disappointments because you know that it's just a part of life. And you live with the understanding that loss is unavoidable, especially if there are to be any gains. There are no magic formulas or silver bullets to guarantee your security. But sometimes, fate throws you the fortune of being able to pick your losses wisely. 
Recently, I was texting a close friend of mine who's been going through an existential crisis. You know, this is when you start questioning the meaning of life and the point of it all. You may even question the point of your own life. Does it have any meaning? Does it have any purpose? Or do you just feel irrelevant and useless? Having gone through an existential crisis myself, I related to her by saying, it seems like we're in a losing game. We're the only real choices about what we're willing to lose and why. Yes, I, I know this sounds dark and dismal, but many of you already know, so you don't need to be told, that sometimes your best isn't good enough. Or like the old 80s saying goes, shit happens. <laughs> and for this reason, it very much resonated with me when I saw a social media post that read, tired of working on myself, I will now be unapologetically insane. <laughs> Why? Because all the self-help in the world doesn't fix the fact that we're living in a reality where sometimes your best isn't good enough. Because of this, I've come to the conclusion that all you can do is your best knowing that even that is no guarantee. I mean, if you don't give it to your best, that's a guarantee that you won't have any good come from it, right? <laughs> but if you um, accept that there will be losses, and then when possible, pick your losses wisely, uh, things might turn out better. And if you're going to lose, um, ensure that you're going to do it for the right reasons because you honored your heart, because you honored your principles. And accept that these losses, yes, they will pain you. There's no way around it. But if you're going to endure this kind of pain of loss, let it not be for anything less than heart and principle-based reasons. And expect that life is going to tempt and challenge you to do otherwise. It'll mock you as if you're a fool for living out of your heart and soul. People who aren't doing this will appear to be getting ahead. But the wise person knows no one escapes the duality of this reality. The wise person knows no one escapes the human condition of failure. With this knowledge, live the days you're appointed as pointless as it may seem at times. And finally, try to finish well in spite of the losses so that you leave others better than you found them. And in this way, we find meaning. We provide meaning in a life that seems ordinary and sometimes meaningless.